Today I'm showing you how to start your Quarto document without really knowing any HTML and CSS. Of course, you will learn some basic HTML and CSS as you apply the technique I'm showing you today, but you can get started without any knowledge right now. In a previous video of this series, we have created an SCSS file with a couple of bootstrap variables in it. Today we are filling the rules section of that file. This will give you another way to style your Quarto documents without having to rely on bootstrap variables and finding them first. And the way to figure out what to put into this section is to open your Quarto document on your web browser, right click anywhere and then press inspect. This will open up the web developer view of your website. The web inspector shows you both your Quarto document and all the corresponding HTML and CSS code. You see, as I untangle the code on the right hand side and move my cursor through it, you can see that blocks on the left are highlighted. This is already one of the fundamental things you need to know about HTML, namely everything is a block. So the first thing you have to do to style your output is to find the correct block that you want to change. But you don't have to go through the code manually. That's what the inspector is for. For example, if we wanted to change the headlines of our website, just go to the headline, right click and press inspect and you will automatically be navigated to where you need to go. Also notice everything is wrapped in some tag. In fact, every block corresponds to a tag. For example, the code I've just looked at uses an h1 tag, which means the level one headings. And this section here uses an h2 tag. Paragraphs are wrapped in p tags and inside of that p tag, you will find that hyperlinks are wrapped in an a tag. So if you want to change something, you just have to figure out what kind of tag you need to target and apply style changes to that tag. You can find all style descriptions of the selected tag in the style sheet below the HTML code. Here we can see that the h1 tags and also the h2 tags uses these kind of styles. And the good thing about the web inspector is that we can add our own styles to this. For example, we could Google the CSS code for the text color and use that to make the text dark blue. The great thing about this approach is that you immediately see if your code works. Here you see that all level 1 and level 2 headings are colored in dark blue now. Personally, I also like to use a different font for the headings, so let's change the font family to Meriwether, which was one of the fonts we have imported earlier in the CSS file. Now let us make sure that our changes actually stick. You see, if I were to reload the website, all of my changes will be lost. This is great news for you because you cannot break anything. But it's also kind of bad news because changes are not permanent. And the way to make this permanent is to go to your SCSS file and put in the code that you have copied from your web browser. Of course, you only need to keep the code that you wrote yourself. Now, if we re-render our document, you can see that the changes are permanent now. And we can use our previous variables in the SCSS code too. For example, we could use our primary color instead of dark blue for a more consistent look. Okay, so you have seen that in order to style your documents with SCSS, you have to use your web inspector, find out the text that you want to target, then change their style with SCSS keywords that you can find online, and then copy everything to your SCSS file. This isn't too hard, is it? So let's do some more examples. We see here that our section is labeled important for whatever reason, and we may want that all important sections are styled differently. So let's just go to our code inspector and inspect the section. Now, if we target this section here, then we can change everything that is inside of this block. For example, we could go to the style sheet again and make the color dark blue. But notice a couple of things. First, we can see here that this headline of this section didn't actually change. The reason for that is that we have already specified that h2 headings are supposed to use this orange color. And because this is a more specific thing than saying everything in that section should be blue, the heading remains unchanged. But what we can use is text transform uppercase. What we see now is that the heading, just like everything else in the section, is all caps now. That's because there is nothing more specific that overrules the change we have just implemented. You see, in HTML, the most specific description always wins. That's also why the code block uses all caps now too, but the text color is still unchanged. We can actually see this if we drill down into the HTML code of the code block with the inspector. There, we can see that the code lines use span tags that use a more specific description for the color. And therefore the color that we have specified in the code above 
will not take effect. Now let's go back to our section and try to make these changes permanent. And the way to do that, if you don't want to use SCSS for this, is to just state the styles when you declare the section. Here I can just throw in the regular CSS styles by putting in the styles like this. And if we re-render our Quarto file, you will see that everything, including the heading, became blue because Quarto also automatically applies the change that we specified not only to the section, but also to the headline itself. Once again, you can see that in the code because if you look at the H2 heading now, you will see that the color style is specified in there now. Here it is also neat to see that our original style using the orange color is overwritten by this inline style that we have specified here. And if we deactivate this, then the lower level change will take effect. Now going back to our quarto file, we can see that this is just a terrible way to style things. First of all, it looks ugly and it is not really reusable. If we wanted to reuse this, we could of course copy and paste this over here and it will work. But if we want to change the color now, then we have to change it everywhere and this is just tedious. So let's do something else instead. So let's remove our styles here and apply a class instead. A class is like a reusable component that we can style and we can create such a class with a dot, which is just like the dots you have seen earlier in the code for the h1 and h2 tag. Here let's just name this class as important-section and then we just have to specify the style for this class in our scss file. There we can just use our code from before and if I re-render everything, we can see that the output is exactly like it was before, but now we have a reusable component. So we could just put this class here as well, and even better, we can change something by just changing one thing in the SCSS file. Now this was a terrible change, so let's revert this. And also, this is not an important section, so let's revert this as well. And then we are back to where we started, but we have a reusable component now. Let's play around with this one a little bit more. For example, what if we wanted this text to not be all caps and only the headings of important sections to be all caps? We can make this happen by simply taking out this text transform. This will of course make sure that nothing uses all caps. But now we can target this level 2 heading by saying we want to target all level two headings that are of class important section. And in there, we can say that text transform needs to be uppercase. Now, if we re-render this, we will see that we have all caps headings and regular sized text in the paragraph, just like we want. Now, before I show you one more example of how to change stuff, let me remind you to hit that like button if you find this video useful. This will help me a lot, so thank you for your support. Next, let us tweak our code block a little bit. For example, I would like to have all of this in bold text. But I have no clue which text I need to target to make this happen. So this is why we go into our code inspector, press right click and inspect. This has sent me to the span text and I can check all of them out if I want to. But I know that I want to change all of the code, so let's move up one layer. Here we can see that this text seems to target all of the code. But we could also move even further to check, okay, this seems to be the highest level thing that we can change. So let's click on that and see what the most specific description of this thing is. And we can see that it's div.sourcecode. This means that it is a div container, which is just a rectangular container that we use in HTML all the time. And that container has a class called sourcecode. This already sounds like it will probably target all the code blocks everywhere. So let's change this part. We can copy and paste this into our SCSS file and change the font weight to bold. Notice that the inline code didn't change at all, so let's have a look what's going on there. We go back to our web inspector, inspect it, and we'll see that this is written in a code tag. And the most specific description sounds very complicated. But the great thing is that you do not have to figure out what all of this means. You just need to know that this is somehow the description of the inline code so let's just use this and copy and paste this into our SCSS file and then apply the changes that we want. If we save this and re-render this, we will see that the inline code will be bold now too. Very exciting, I know. Finally, there's one more thing you need to learn before you can style your own Quarto files. Let's try to highlight specific lines of code by making the background white. And the way to do that is to drill down into the code with the web inspector 
and figure out the container that contains all of this. Here, this just seems to be a span tag. And if we want to change the background color, we either Google what the CSS code for this is, or we just figure out by trial and error. In any case, setting the background to white seems to do the job just fine. Now we have to figure out how to make this change permanent for this very specific part of our website. And the way to do that is to look at the HTML code and see that this span tag also uses an ID. We can use this in our SCSS file by going into it and saying that we want to target span tags. And now instead of saying that are of class whatever, we are saying that have the following ID and we use the hashtag to give that ID. And then we can just put in the stuff we want to change and re-render our core to file like we've done before. You can even specify IDs yourself. For example, if you want to target only this section, then you could just write hashtag like an ID and say this ID is called special section. And if you re-render this now and look into your HTML code, you will see that this section uses the ID now. And just like before, we could now target the section that uses our ID in our SCSS file and do all kinds of weird stuff with it if we want to. All right, with these basics, you can get a lot of stuff done. And I think this will get you very far without having to master HTML and CSS. And I know that as an R user, it can feel very stressful to learn this HTML and to try to figure it out somehow. But this can also be useful for your other stuff that you want to do in R. For example, in this video, I show you how to create very nice line charts with ggplot. And this will also use a little bit of HTML notation to apply the final touches in there. Thanks for watching and have fun checking out this upper video.